So I'm going to show a quick demo of using uh, analytics and the use analytics hooks with React Router v6. And React Router is in preview right now. It should be released sometime soon. Uh, but this method actually works with any type of router um, as well as the analytics library. It really works with any JavaScript library. It's not dependent on React. What I'm going to be showing today, though, is the uh, use analytics hooks that is specific for React, which makes it a little bit nicer to work with analytics uh, when you are using React. Before we jump into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to Lee Halliday for the awesome tutorial on React Router v6. That's actually the base app that I'm going to be using today. Uh, it's a simple little shoe store. Uh, with uh, some nested components and what have you. But let's go ahead and jump into the app. So here we have our you know, shoe store. There's a bunch of different routes with you know, a shoe that I can buy. And, and that's really as simple as it gets. Nothing too fancy here. Let's jump into the code and uh, actually see what this looks like. So inside of my um, app here, I'm using the browser router, importing my React app, and then inside of the app.js file, I am uh, using my routes uh, to you know, do everything with React Router v6. And then I have uh, one effect here that's listening to the location to actually send page views. And we're going to implement that on this video. And we're also going to implement uh, some custom tracking on the handle purchase and just walk through in general the uh, different kind of pieces uh, of the use analytics um, library and the, the different higher order components and what have you. But without further ado, let's jump over to our terminal and actually get uh, the packages that we need installed here. So inside of my example app here, I'm going to yarn add analytics and I'm going to add the use-analytics package. You can obviously npm install this as well. I'm just using yarn here uh, in this video. So once those get installed, great. We are ready to actually add analytics to our application. So let's go ahead and do that. So in our, we'll add it to the index.js and we'll refactor this as we go. But so inside of um, app.js, we want to import the analytics package from analytics. And before we actually uh, initialize an analytics instance, I'm just gonna do a quick aside. So the analytics library, what it is, is, is basically an abstraction over um, different analytics tools or your own analytics tools. Um, this is the like a super bare bones implementation here where, hey, I'm just importing analytics. I'm initializing it, which we're gonna do in a second in our app. And then every time analytics.track is called, that callback, this handler is fired. So I can send that to, again to like Google Analytics or Amplitude or HubSpot or my own backend. Similarly with page views, I can send that page view data to my own serverless functions for processing or into Google Analytics or what have you. So uh, really uh, at its core, analytics is uh, an abstraction layer, but it lets you actually you know, send data to multiple places uh, as well as allow users to opt out of analytics and all kinds of other stuff. So let's actually initialize this in our application. So I'm going to do const analytics equals, and this ships with um, full TypeScript um, types. So we can actually get autocomplete here of like, all right, I need an app name and then the, any plugins that I want to uh, attach. So I'm going to call this uh, awesome app. And then uh, the plugins that I'm going to uh, install, we'll install a real plugin in a little bit, but just for right now, I'm gonna just create a page tracking um, inline plugin here. Console.log page you fired. And then we're also going to um, add a tracking handler. So track, this is also just a function that I can send data uh, with. So uh, if you wanna see what um, the entire like uh, data that is passed into these, um, you can console.log that out. All right, uh, the other thing that we uh, plugins need is a name. So I'm just gonna call this my custom plugin for right now. And we'll take a look at installing Google Analytics in a little bit here. 
All right, so the analytics uh, is initiated and that means our entire analytics API is now available for us to use. If we pop back over into our application, we can see if we console.log out analytics, the analytics instance, we can see the entire API uh, available to us to use, which includes identify, page, and track. Uh, the entire API reference is, is documented on the doc site. Uh, so if you're curious, go check that out. Um, but yeah, we have our custom kind of uh, plugin here that we're going to be using. And that's really one of the beauties of, of using analytics. Uh, you can actually implement the entire kind of tracking stuff in your application without wiring it up to a, a real analytics provider. Um, you can actually just do that after the fact by uh, installing um, just a, another plugin and just like inlining it into um, the plugins array. So that's uh, similarly, if you wanted to remove something like Google Analytics from your app, you can just uh, remove that one line uh, in the plugins array and you're off to the races. So that's what, why I really like um, kind of this layer. Um, I build my applications, build all the kind of tracking mechanisms inside of my components, and I don't need to worry about where that data is going to be sent until um, you know the business folks decide what tool they're going to use, etc. But cool. So uh, with analytics now, we have this instance inside of our application. We could actually import this analytics instance around into various components. So for example, inside of the the shoe page, I could import analytics from, um, you know, I might put this in a utils file from utils analytics, and I can use, you know, dot page, dot track, etc. off of this. But, um, you know, using relative paths is uh, kind of tricky, especially if you refactor your application a bunch. So that's really what the use analytics hook is for. So we can use the analytics instance wherever we want inside of our React tree. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, initialize that um, in our uh, top level of our application. So going into the um, React Hooks docs, uh, let's take a look at how to use. So what we want to do is actually um, import the analytics provider uh, from our package. So uh, at the very top here, we're gonna import analytics provider we're not going to use the use analytics hook here. And then we want to wrap our uh, component in the analytics provider. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. We'll keep the browser inside. I don't think the nesting layer really matters here. And then uh, you do need to pass it the analytics instance. So I'm just going to say instance equals, and that's analytics, because that's what we have uh, initialized here. Again, uh, typically I will pull this out into a utils file, so it's not uh, kind of in the main uh, index.js file, uh, just so it's a little bit cleaner. But um, yeah, so now uh, when we save this uh, and go back to our application, uh, there will be a new context on the page. And if we go into one of those uh, nested components, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little more copy and pasting. If we go into, let's say, the shoe page, um, and I want to use analytics here, instead of importing the direct path to analytics, um, my analytics instance, I can just uh, import use analytics and use the use analytics hook. So when we do that, what we can do is say, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna pull off the track and we're gonna use analytics. Very cool. And uh, inside of here, uh, so we have a handle purchase function. So if I go ahead and go into our shoe, and if I click buy, hey, there we go, we're purchasing this shoe. I need a, a bunch more Jordans for my collection. Awesome. So I'm just console logging that out now. Uh, but what I can do now is because uh, we have that analytics instance for, at the ready, um, we can actually uh, record a shoe purchased event. And then I can also add you know, additional metadata with this. So let's say price equals, and we'll do shoe.price. And we'll do what else is on this shoe, the name of the shoe, name. So we'll do shoe name as well. Cool. 
All right, so our tracking event is now wired up. And again, this tracking event maps down to analytics.track. So if you we were importing this directly, it would be analytics.track. Because we're using use analytics, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm just pulling it, I'm destructuring it off of that instance here. Uh, and the, the docs for the tracking event is, is right here. So there's a bunch of different examples. Um, but yeah, it's really like, what's the event name and then any additional uh, payload with it. So uh, let's go ahead and save this. And if we go into our application now, uh, when I click on buy shoe, we should see the tracking event that we have in our custom plugin firing as well. So there we go. So the console.log uh, is happening from our function here. I'm gonna get rid of this and uh, we'll go ahead and click this again. So what we can see here is the tracking event is fired. Um, with the uh, event of shoe purchased and then the properties here of the name of the shoe and the price of the shoe. So uh, if I was you know, implementing this to send to my backend, I would come into the tracking and I would say, all right, so let's use the fetch API to call out to you know, my, my endpoint uh, API, blah, blah, blah. And then I would just map in like event name and the the payload here and then inside of my serverless function or whatever i would i would send those in so so the tracking function that you implement here as a an actual like uh, analytics plugin um, that's a generic one that passes that uh, data into your given api so that looks good to me let's actually implement page views as well so inside of app.js um, what we have is we're using one effect here um, and that uh, changes every time the page location changes. This is a React Router v6 feature uh, that you can use location and get information off of that. Uh, but every time that changes, uh, it's effectively a page view in our application. So what I can do here is, uh, what, what we want to do is uh, import um, use analytics again, the hook from use analytics and let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to use the full um, one right in here so we'll go ahead and use analytics and spell this right and now inside of here what I can do is say uh, dot page analytics dot page again I could destructure page off of here but let's just do it this way I'm going to go ahead and um, console uh, get rid of that console and now every time the location changes, uh, we're actually going to uh, send a page view. So let's go ahead and try that out. Let me refresh. And we can see uh, initially when the page loaded, uh, it is calling our function. And if I go to back to the all shoes page, again, another page view has been fired. Another page view has been fired when I go home. Uh, additionally, if I go into the individual shoes. So we can see that our page view is firing and the properties uh, of that are the uh, route and the refer and a bunch of other information about the page. That is the information that we would take, um, in, again, in our custom plugin or you know the Google Analytics or HubSpot or whatever provider you're using automatically does this. But um, we would do, you know again, our API call to uh, persist that page view data. Um, Again, uh, and, and we could uh, allow users to opt out and like not even attach this plugin if they have opted out. There actually is a, a number of uh, ways to do that in analytics. There's actually a do not track plugin that will respect um, user settings. So if they have that, uh, if you install this plugin and uh, attach it to the plugins array, uh, any page view, track, or uh, identif identify call, etc just will no op. So it won't even send any of the other plugins that you might have installed. Uh, let's actually go ahead and install Google Analytics um, and I'll show you uh, how that works. So let's say, you know, uh, we have our, our application um, set up, we're doing page view tracking, we are uh, submitting uh, custom event uh, data and we want to uh, actually send that to Google Analytics. So what I can do is, again, I'm going to stop my application. I'm going to do yarn add, and it is um, at Google Analytics. 
So the at analytics namespace is the, so this will install Google Analytics. Once Google Analytics is installed, what we can do is in our application, go back into where we have uh, initialized analytics and we'll go ahead and add this in here. So we'll say import Google Analytics from the Google Analytics package. And uh, to actually use this, um, all we need to do is uh, add a comma here because that's a, another plugin. We can initialize the Google Analytics plugin and this is also typed as well. We have uh, a tracking ID that we need to uh, initialize. Man, this formatting is messing me up. Here we go. Yeah, so this is my inline plugin and I would actually do something like this, const my plugin, we'll clean this up a little bit. And then we can just do this as a one-liner. Cool. So uh, now we have Google Analytics installed and we have uh, my custom plugin installed. As you can see, plugins are just a plain old JavaScript object. That's actually, if you go look at the source code of any of the uh, provider plugins, it's uh, they're all implemented the exact same way. Um, uh, the, the next step obviously would be like to plug in a real Google Analytics ID here. Um, this one's a fake one just for the demo. But if we go uh, back in here and uh, start our application, yarn start. So uh, if I go into, like let's navigate around. If I look at the networks tab, I'm gonna clear this out. I can click around in my application. We can see that this is the Google Analytics page view event firing. It's sending to a fake account right now because that tracking ID is wrong, but it is um, triggering those events. As well as if I if I clear this out and click by the shoe, hey, there's my custom tracking event with the, the price sending into uh, Google Analytics. So that is really um, kind of use analytics in a nutshell. There is a lot more that you can do with analytics. Um, there are a number of different things with the use analytics package as well. So there, there's a way to actually use um, analytics inside of classes. There's a way to use it inside of functional components. There's also a higher order component uh, with analytics if you are uh, using class components as well. So there, there's a number of different ways to, to use this with React. Um, I hope this makes it a little bit easier to consume. The, the, really the main benefit here again is uh, by having the single abstraction layer for your, your app telemetry, you can uh, do a lot of stuff uh, and add and remove. So let's say business requirements change and we don't want, you know, uh, GDPR says no more Google Analytics. We can simply just remove Google Analytics and remove the dependency from our project. And we don't have to go through our entire code base and remove those tracking calls. That just got rid of it for us completely. And that's kind of the beauty of, of using something like this. If you want to see any of the source code uh, of this demo, uh, this is the repo, Use Analytics with React Router Demo on GitHub. Go ahead and feel free to fork that, clone it down, do whatever you want with it. And if you have any questions on using analytics or using analytics with React or Vue or whatever, because again, it works with any framework, uh, including inside of Node.js and in React Native, feel free to uh, yeah, tweet at me at David Wells on Twitter. Happy to answer any questions people have. Um, as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.